what you have to do, and that I will not do here, but that's what we did in this entire course, you must follow Eberhard Hoff. And you must work in state space. Remember, state space has full specification of your states. If two states are different in state space, they're different. It's not a projection. Right? If there is law of evolution in state space, it's a line, a trajectory. But if you look at a flame front or any picture of fluid flow in three dimensional, it's some projection in configuration space of a picture or a video. So it's extremely hard to use these things and understand how different solutions are related to each other. But in state space, they will follow general strategy we developed in this course. We'll look at different solutions, we'll look at the unstable manifolds, we'll look at the, where they go, their heteroclinic connections. And none of that it's possible to guess or visualize by looking at three-dimensional fluids. It's just impossible to figure out that if I have four vortices here and two vortices there, that I have to do this, like Houdini, to go from one to the other. But in state space, you will have a very clear itinerary how you do it. It will have to do with stability of in a linear stability in a neighborhood, eigenvectors, unstable manifolds, everything is well defined. And all these things, as I tried to argue in a second lecture of this course 16 weeks ago, all these things work in infinite dimensions, not just in three and four dimensions, because the main objects are points, the equilibrium curves, the trajectories, invariant solutions are periodic orbits. If there is a symmetry, then invariant solution is a torus, so periodic motion plus group motion, and stuff like that. And these objects can be viewed, even though in infinite dimension, their projection, their shadow on our two or three dimensions, will distinguish different things. So, you know, the lines that intersect, in the projection, I can change the projection a little bit to realize how they go against each other, Torah, etc. So our tools of nonlinear dynamics, which seem very crippling because they're just few dimensions, because all the intuition was developed that way, they actually can be ported to the state space. So my general recommendation is, if you're interested in spatiotemporal problems, it could be problem of climate, oceanography, fluid dynamics, population dynamics, cardiac dynamics, anything that has equations which can be written as deterministic equations, PDEs or the discretization large sets of ODEs. If you do this, you should always have a dual vision. You should always look at what the flame front does. But then you should look at what it does in a state space. When you look at fluid or flame front in the physical space, you have lots of good intuition. You know that if you see very sharp features, it means you're burning lots of energy there and stuff like that. So you, you have ideas about how to think about important aspects of your problem, what is it that you're trying to predict, how you characterize, etc. That intuition is totally essential. If you have a turbulent phenomenon, this is not sufficient because you have to classify all possible states of turbulence, how they're related. For that, you need to use a strategy that we developed in state space, in which you hierarchically find more and more important notions. So first you find equilibria and traveling waves, then you find uh, periodic orbits, you might do symmetry reduction, then you find connections, between neighborhoods, then you start building some symbolic dynamics, and when you have that much geometrical understanding of a problem, then averaging turns out to be an application of expansion of spectral determinants or dynamical zeta functions in terms of these solutions that you have, which all live in state space, but can be visualized in configuration space. And then you have a theory of convergence of your 
results. You can estimate the error made by omitting longer orbits and stuff like that. But that's, that's the point of the course. Dynamics originally developed for a parabola to count the population of the fish in the lake year from year, but made so sophisticated thanks to Poncare, Kalmogorov, Sina, I don't know, Smale, good people who have thought about these problems. Ever, ever had hope in case of fluid dynamics is a very powerful tool for this set of problems. The problems are the problems which you can state as a set of equations, and you can think of as deterministic equations, and you can describe the set of states that they are supposed to act on and move around. If your problem needs predictions on a scale much longer than the scale of Lapun of scale, where the accuracy of integrations are lost or modeling, then this is the theory to use. That's the only theory. There is no other theory. <laughs> this one. 